Hello everyone and welcome to Weathersfield Proctor Library Storytime. I'm Glenna Coleman, Youth Services Librarian here, and this is our library bear, Bear. You may notice he is specially dressed for today's session because today we're going to read stories from Japan. You may not know, but today is the 108th anniversary of the planting of 3,000 cherry trees in Washington, D.C. Those were a gift from the nation of Japan in 1912. And we cannot go to Washington, D.C. this year to see the cherry blossoms, but we can read some stories about Japan. And so Bear here has uh, decided that he would like to read stories about Japan today. We are going to read some stories from the book Japanese children's favorite stories. Now, you notice that on the front cover there is no author for this book, and that is because these stories are all old, old stories. And here are some pictures of some of the stories that we'll be reading. But instead of an author, what we have is an editor by Florence Sadake. That means she chose the stories and put them in the order that they're in in the book. And we have an illustrator. These stories are illustrated by Yoshisuke Kurosaki. Our first story is called The Toothpick Warriors. Now, this may seem a little strange to people, but I'm guessing that some of you may have similar habits to the little girl in this story. We're going to read the story, and you can tell me later if you have some of these same habits. The Toothpick Warriors. Once upon a time, there was a princess who had a very bad habit. Ooh, I wonder if you can guess what that habit is. She would lie in bed at night and pick her teeth with a toothpick. That wasn't so bad, but after she was done, instead of throwing the toothpick away as she should have, she would stick it between the straw mats that make the floor of a Japanese house and upon which the princess slept. Now, this was not a very clean habit, and since the princess did this every night, the cracks between the mats were soon filled with used toothpicks. Now, I'm guessing you don't put toothpicks on your floor in your bedroom, but I'm wondering if you hide things under your bed. If that's the case, you know exactly what this girl is doing. One night, she was suddenly awakened by the noise of fighting. She heard the voices of warriors and the sound of swords. Frightened, she sat up and lit the lamp beside her bed. She was so surprised by what she saw that she could hardly believe her eyes. There, right beside her quilts, were many tiny little warriors. Some were fighting, some were singing, some were dancing, and all were making a great deal of noise. The princess thought that she must be dreaming, so she pinched herself. But no, she was wide awake, and the tiny warriors were still there making a terrible racket. They made so much noise that she couldn't sleep at all that night. And when she did manage to doze off, she suddenly woke up because it was so quiet. The tiny warriors had left. She was very afraid, but she was ashamed to tell the Lord, her father, because he probably wouldn't have believed her. Yet, next night, when she went to bed, the same thing happened again, and the night after that, too. The tiny warriors made so much noise every night that she couldn't sleep, and each day the princess became a little paler than the day before. Soon she became very ill from lack of sleep. Her father kept asking her what the matter was, and finally she told him. At first he didn't believe her, but finally he decided to see for himself. He told her that she should sleep in his room, and he would stand watch in hers. And so he did. But though he remained awake all night long and watched and waited, the tiny warriors did not come. While waiting, however, he noticed the many toothpicks lying about on the floor. He looked very carefully at the toothpicks and finally discovered what had been happening. Ooh, I wonder what that is. Next day, he called his daughter to him 
and showed her one of the toothpicks. Its sides were all scarred and cut. The marks were so very tiny that the princess could just barely see them. She asked her father what the marks meant. Her father explained that the tiny warriors had come to her room because she left the toothpicks lying around. They had no swords of their own and wanted some very much. Now, for a tiny warrior, a toothpick made the best possible kind of sword, and that was the reason they came every night. They hadn't come last night, he said, because he was there with a real sword, and they were afraid. Then he looked at his daughter sternly and asked her why there were so many used toothpicks in her room. Ooh, I wonder, do your parents ask you questions like that? I certainly have had that experience. The princess was very ashamed of her bad habit, but admitted that she had used the toothpicks and stuck them between the cracks of the mats because she was too lazy to get up and throw them away properly. She also said she was very, very sorry and promised that she would never, never be so lazy again. Then she picked up all the toothpicks, even those that were at the very bottom of the cracks, and threw them all away. That night, the warriors did not come because there were no tiny swords for them, and they never came again. Soon, the princess became healthy again because the warriors no longer kept her awake. She became very neat about everything and pleased her father greatly by even sweeping the garden every day. She never forgot the tiny warriors, and if she ever used a toothpick again, you may be sure she was very careful to throw it away properly. Well, Bear, what did you think of that story? I'm going to look around afterwards and see if there are any toothpicks here, but I'm guessing you're a very neat library bear. Well, we're still reading stories in this book, Japanese Children's Favorite Stories. I hope you enjoyed the last one. This next story is about a woodcutter. This is called The Sticky Sticky Pine. Once there was a woodcutter. He was very poor, but very kind. Never would he tear off the living branches of a tree to make firewood. Instead, he would gather only the dead branches on the ground. He knew what happened when you tore a branch off a tree. The sap, which is the blood of a tree, would drip and drip, just as though the poor tree were bleeding. So, since he didn't want to harm the trees, he never tore off the branches. One day, he was walking beneath a high pine tree hunting for firewood when he heard a voice saying, Sticky, sticky is my sap, for my tender twigs are snapped. The woodcutter looked, and sure enough, someone had broken three limbs off the pine and the sap was running out. Skillfully he mended them, saying, Now these tender twigs I'll wrap, and in that way stop the sap. And he tore a piece from his own clothes to make a bandage. No sooner had he finished than many tiny gold and silver things fell from the tree. It was money, a lot of it. The surprised woodcutter was almost covered up with it, he looked at the tree and smiled and thanked it. Then he took the money home. There was a great amount, and he slowly realized that he was now a very rich woodcutter, indeed. Everyone knows that the pine tree is the sign of prosperity in Japan, and sure enough, the grateful pine had made him very rich. Just then, a face appeared in the window. It was the face of another woodcutter, but this woodcutter was neither nice nor kind. In fact, it was he who had torn off the branches of the pine and had broken its twigs. Look, uh, when he saw the money, he said, Where did you get all that money? Look how nice and bright it is. The good woodcutter held up the money so the other could see it. It was oblong in shape, the way money used to be in Japan, and he had five basketfuls. He told the bad woodcutter how he had got the money. From that big pine tree? Yes, that was the one. Hmm, 
said the bad woodcutter. And he ran away as fast as he could go. Ooh, where do you think he's going, Bear? Stop and make a prediction. You ready? Okay. He ran right up to the old pine tree. Oh, I bet you were right. And the tree said, Sticky, sticky is my blood. Touch me. You'll receive a flood. Oh, just what I want, said the bad man, a flood of gold and silver. He reached up and broke off another branch. The pine tree suddenly showered him. But it showered him with sticky, sticky sap, not gold and silver at all. The bad woodcutter was covered with sap. It got in his hair and on his arms and legs. Since it was so sticky, he couldn't move. And though he called for help, no one could hear him. He had to remain there for three days, one day for each branch, until the sap became soft enough for him to drag himself home. And after that, he never broke another branch off a living tree. Well, it seems like that woodcutter learned his lesson. All right, and our last story is called my uh, Mr. Lucky Straw. Once upon a time, long ago, there was a young man named Shobei who lived in a farm village in Japan. One day on his way home from working in the fields, he tripped on a stone and tumbled over and over on the ground. When he stopped tumbling, he discovered that he had caught a piece of straw up in his hand. Well, well, he said, a piece of straw is a worthless thing but it seems I was meant to pick up this one, so I won't throw it away. Hmm. Now he's called Mr. Lucky Straw. Do you suppose this straw will be lucky for him? Let's keep reading and find out. As he went walking along, holding the straw in his hand, a dragonfly came flying in circles around his head. What a pest, he said. I'll show this dragonfly not to bother me. So he caught the dragonfly and tied the straw around its tail. He went on walking, holding the dragonfly, and presently met a woman walking with her little boy. When the little boy saw the dragonfly, he wanted it very badly. Mother, please get me that dragonfly, he said. Please, please, please. Here, little boy, I'll give you the dragonfly, Shobei said, handing the boy the straw. To express her appreciation, the boy's mother gave Shobei three of the oranges she was carrying. Shobei thanked her and went on his way. Before long, he met a peddler who was so thirsty that he was almost fainting. There was no water anywhere near. Shobei felt very sorry for the peddler and gave him all the oranges so he could drink the juice. The peddler was very grateful, and in exchange he gave Shobei three pieces of cloth. Shobei went on his way, carrying the cloth, and met a princess riding in a fine carriage, guarded by many attendants. The princess looked out of the carriage at Shobei and said, Oh, what pretty cloth you have there. Please let me have it. Shobei gave the princess the cloth, and, to thank him, she gave him a large sum of money. Shobei took the money and bought many fields with it. He divided the land up among the people of his village. Thus everyone had a piece of land of his very own. They all worked very hard in their fields. The village became very prosperous and many new barns and storehouses were built. Everyone was amazed when they remembered that all this wealth came from the little straw which Shobei had happened to pick up. Shobei became the most important man in the village. Everyone respected him greatly. And as long as he lived, they all called him Mr. Lucky Straw. And see here, along the bottom, we have our straw, our dragonfly, the oranges, the rolls of cloth, and the bag of money. All of the steps of the story. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's story time, Bear. Remember, these stories were from Japanese children's favorite stories, and they were edited by Florence Sakade and illustrated by Yoshisuke Kurosaki. Now let's see on this picture, can we find 
any of those? Hmm. Well, I don't see those particular stories. Well, maybe another day we'll read some more Japanese stories. I hope you enjoyed today's session and remember to think about the beautiful cherry trees that were planted in Washington, D.C. as a gift from Japan. We'll be back with another session of Storytime. Bye, everybody.